Crosstube, it's Bernie here from Hooking and Stitching. Today is Thursday the 12th of August. Um, it's quarter past five in the evening and I'm here to film my next floss tube. I think this is floss tube number 12 if I remember rightly. Uh, I've got lots to show you today. I've been doing some crochet, some cross stitch, um, some finishing, some sewing um, and if you stay till the end, I'm going to have my first little giveaway. So um, keep an eye out for that one. So just to let you all know today, if I appear a little bit tired or if I lift my arm and I go, Ooh, it's because I have my second COVID vaccination this morning. And my arm is hurting. I actually considered not filming. I thought oh, I'm going to be better off if I just leave this. And then I sort of tossed it up in my head. Oh God, I can't film till Tuesday then if I do that. So no, let's just crack on and get on with it. So I'm a little bit ouchy. I'm a little bit tired. We've had a really busy, busy day today. We were, we were only supposed to pop out for an hour or so. We've been out all day. We, we ended up going to um, Matlock Bath here in Derbyshire, which is like a seaside town that's not in the seaside. It's just arcades and fish and chip shops, sweet shops, ice creams, uh, donuts, you know, um, the, the only problem is it's very popular here um, in this, this area of the Midlands and um, all the car parks in the vicinity were absolutely packed and my husband ended up parking a good, it takes about 10 minutes to drive so it took him a good sort of 30 minutes to walk it, although to be fair, he just walked quite quick. He might have been a bit quicker than that. But he ended up parking in actually in Matlock Town as opposed to Matlock Bath, which is the little seaside villagey thing. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we've, we've done a fair bit of walking today. He, I took the children and he went and parked the car and then we walked halfway back with him and then he took he walked off and fetched the car and came back to get us and then we went on a really interesting ride there's a, a castle called um Ryber castle that's um just outside of uh, matlock bath we'd seen it on our way in and we're oh, what's that castle up there and um he said he wanted to go investigate it so he popped us in the sat nav and it took me up no word of a lie like this steep in the car roads where it's single width I was driving <laughs> and the car could only cope with first gear it couldn't even do second gear it couldn't pull us up um because it was just so steep <laughs> I was just driving up there going please don't let anything come the other way <laughs> coming back down was fun <laughs> but uh, yeah going up the car found it quite hard work but um yeah busy busy day considering we were just going to pop out to a pet shop this morning because my son's got a newfound um fascination with axolotls those then there's like walking fish they're like they're actually an amphibian um but they've got arms and oh, sorry my arms are down here <laughs> arms and legs and um yeah i don't i find them quite creepy i don't really like them but uh, my son does and we found that this shop um so about a 40 minute drive from us had got them in stock we only went to look we weren't going to buy one and they got all sorts of other things in there they even got meerkats um I didn't even know you could buy them as pets but loads of birds and fish and they got rabbits and guinea pigs and mice and hamsters and things like that but yeah they got uh, old reptiles as well lizards because we used to keep lizards and snakes years ago me and my husband before we had the children so I was introducing the children to the pythons and oh mommy and daddy have one of these and, <laughs> and the uh the bearded dragons I said, oh yeah yeah we had those yeah they get this big <laughs> and um yeah, it was quite an interesting little uh, wander around the shop. It was almost like being in a zoo and it, so we bought some treats for the cats and the rabbits just to pay our way. <laughs> um, but anyway, you're here to see um, stitching and things that I've been doing. So we'll get on with that. Now, I'm going to refer to my um, little diary to just to check up on where we were last time I spoke to you. So I filmed on the... Let's go back to July, shall we? I keep flicking open on June. And no, we're in August now. Here we go. Film Floss Tube 11 on 29th of July. And then that day I was due to start Snapdragon by Nora Corbett. So, let me find her. I've got her in front of me here. So, this is what Snapdragon looks like. Beautiful design by um, Nora Corbett. And um, it's part of the. Oh, Blossom Pixies, is it? I can't remember now. 
Pixie Blossom collection, it says it on the back here, Pixie Blossom collection by Nora Corbett. So I absolutely adore this piece. I shall um, pop you in a picture of what it looked like last time I worked on it. And I got quite a bit done. I'm actually really quite pleased with my progress on this one. So, oh, I can really feel it in my arm. She is now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, absolutely fantastic progress on that one. Really cracked up. I really enjoy stitching this. It's so pretty and it's so nice to work on and it's got blends and it's going to have beads. You can see there's gaps, uh, there's gaps in her hair, there's gaps around the wings. That's all for the beads. Um, there's going to be quite a few, but I'm leaving those and the back stitching I'm leaving till the end. But yeah, you can see I finished her arms, so that's all her skin done and her wings are completely done. So now it's just a case of moving down and doing the dress. I can't lift my arm any higher. <laughs> But um, yeah, really, really pleased with the progress on that one. She is beautiful. I love the colours in this as well, the purples and the pinks. And then I think it re works really well against this this beautiful green fabric. This is what did I say? 32 count. Yeah, 32 count. I think it's willow green, um, even weave by Zweigart. And um, yeah, I think it just looks pretty on this fabric. It really does. Not sure where this is going to go when I've finished it, but um, it's definitely going to be framed. I'll probably frame this one myself because it's not huge, uh, but it will definitely be framed and somewhere here in the house, whether it be in here or in a public area of the house, that makes sense. Maybe the might even put it in that kitchen dining area because there's nothing on the walls in there at the moment. But anyway, yes, I, uh, I worked on that for three days. Yes, three days. And then the next thing I worked on was Unicorn Spring. So I shall um, pop you in a picture of what that will look like when it's finished because I didn't bring the cover picture up with me. And then a picture of where it was last time you saw it. And I'm pleased to tell you that I managed 3,084 stitches on this piece in three days. Here she is now. I could do with putting something behind this, actually. Let's see. There we go, that's better. So you can actually see the unicorn's body starting to appear. So I filled in a hell of a lot over here, um, up to about sort of this point. But that is completely filled. There's still a few gaps coming further down. But the confetti is so heavy in this piece that I treated myself, as I put it. And I worked on a bit of solid stitching down here in the unicorn's body, which looks really bizarre. Blues and dark greys, because the, the unicorn comes out to this side. Um, but I keep looking back at the cover picture and going, no, it's right, it's right. It'll, it'll come together. <laughs> it just looks bizarre when you start putting those colours in. Um, Unicorn needle man there. So this has done um, two over one tenth stitch on 28 count um, easy count, or easy guide, it's not magic guide, easy count um, by, by Zweigart, not the DMC version, the Zweigart version. And yeah, like I say, 3,084 stitches put into this piece in three days. I don't, oh no, it's two days, only one's two days. Yeah. I did 1,183 on the first day and then a day of no stitching and then on the second day I did 1,901 stitches. I know why that was. I was isolating, wasn't I? I remember um, when I last saw you, when I was filming, I, I just started isolating because somebody at my work had got COVID. Um, yeah, it's amazing how much work you can get done when you, you can't leave the house. So yeah, I stayed home and I stitched. <laughs> so Can't beat it really, can you? <laughs> But um, yeah, could almost do with the into that again. But I so said I've just been double jabbed, and I think as of next Monday, the double jab don't have to isolate, even if they've been in contact with somebody. So I won't be isolating again, hopefully, unless they change it. But yeah, really pleased with how this is coming along. I'm now at what's it say, thirty two point four four percent complete, and oh yeah, for this one's for my full coverage fanatics um, twenty one and twenty one, which I'm doing. 42,000 stitches in 2021 because it's a tenth stitch so you have to double it and I've done 18,043 stitches out of the 42,000 stitches 
So, sorry, there's a cat behind me. You'll see that I'm upstairs as well. I didn't met my husband and children are at home at the moment. My husband's off this week and the children aren't, aren't at school. So, um, yeah, I've come upstairs to film because everybody's, I think, the husband's playing on his games downstairs. And children are in the bedrooms watching phones and things because, uh, to be fair, they've been away from screens all day. So I can't complain too much. But Mitzi is up here with me today, aren't you? Mitzi Mew! Oh, oh, I've just been recognised. Hello! You come to say hello, baby? Hello, sweetheart. So this is my Mizzle Moo. You've met her once before. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, you've got your grumpy face. She doesn't like being held or kissed. Or, no, get off me. Get off me. Right, so after that, I worked on my little magazine freebie uh, that we were calling Stitch Your Cares Away. Um, and over a couple of days, I finished it which I hoped I could do it in three and I did not too. So I'm really pleased with that. So I'll pop a picture here of what it looked like last time you saw it. And I've just started to get some of the, most of the frame of the actual sewing machine in, if I remember right. And here it is now. So sorry, you can still see the hoop mark. It's literally been finished and come off the hoop. But um, yeah, it's uh, all done. All the back stitching's done. All the cross stitching's done. The only thing I didn't do is supposed to have some French knots along the bottom here, but I hate doing French knots and I didn't think it needed them in all honesty. I'm quite happy with how it looks now. So I've got to um, finish this. Probably going to finish it into a little pillow and just hang it up where I'm working. I might even take it to work and hang it near my desk or something like that just to remind myself that it doesn't all crazy. Yesterday was crazy at work um yeah i won't go into too much at the moment but it looks like my role is going to be changing i'm going to be trained up um to do the accounts side of things at the moment i do administration and health and safety i've started dipping my toe in hr because we don't have a hr <laughs> so i've been doing the online courses so that i can have a bit of hr knowledge and um yeah there's been a bit of a hoo-ha with a lady that does accounts and payroll and um it looks like i'm doing that too so i'm going to be doing an extra if it all pans out, I'll be doing four days a week in the office instead of three. Um, but yeah, it was a bit hectic in the office yesterday. I'm quite glad. I'm off for a couple of days now. We're um, we're taking the children to a theme park tomorrow. Um, if you're in the UK, you'll know it. We're going to Alton Towers. Children haven't been to Alton Towers ever before. Uh, me and my husband haven't been for over 10 years. And we're also taking my dad and he hasn't been since I was a child. So it should be good fun. We should have a nice family day. It's supposed to be good weather. So that'll be good. Right, so next, I worked on my darling. Um, so this is my oldest whip, my uh, big old full coverage. I'll pop in a picture here of what it looked like last time you saw it. Um, I'm not going to be showing you the whole thing this time because it's still on the um, frame. It's on my Omnique frame. Um, but uh, I got some good progress. This is going to be really hard to hold up. <laughs> so here's where I am. Do I need to hold something behind this? Come here. <laughs> there we go. Ow, my arm. So I filled in a lot of this bit here and then I started coming down this bit side here and this the only thing that stopped me was how close I am to the scroll. I'm going to have to scroll it a bit further, but there is literally about 10 more stitches down. And then that's the bottom of the piece. So I'm really, really pleased with how this is coming along. I'm looking forward to moving un under the cat's chin. That's um, that bit over there. So this is really awkward to hold because it's heavy. <laughs> but yeah, this is on 18 count. 18 count Ada, uh, easy count Ada. Two over one full crosses because it was my very first heaven and earth and I didn't realise she could go smaller than this because <laughs> it's going to be a big one. Here we go, that's how big she is and it's tall as well because you've got the whole cat on there. But yeah, couldn't be happy with how that one's turned out. And I didn't want to stop stitching it, both of that one and my unicorn spring piece, I didn't want to stop stitching because I just enjoy it so much. I really do enjoy full coverage. I enjoy all my pieces, don't get me wrong, 
but there's just something about the full coverage and the way that I think it's the way when you show people they go oh, that's never all stitched and well yeah it is yeah <laughs> all those little tiny pixels you can see that's a, a stitch yeah and yeah when I tell people that one's 116,800 stitches total when it's finished gosh how on earth have you ever found the time to do that well I think we're into the fourth year now of working on it <laughs> but it's done when it's done it doesn't matter so just to let you know I stitched 610 stitches on the first day 209 on the second day because it was a busy day and 589 on the third day um, so I stitched a total of 1408 um, over the three days it's now at 75.70 percent so we're over three quarters of the way there now and I'm on 88,416 stitches out of 116,800 <laughs> it's it's getting there it's getting there it's not going to be finished this year hopefully next year that should that should be the goal on this one because i really do like it right and then uh one more i was supposed to work on patchwork cats by jardin privé but i didn't i i kind of got sidetracked and you all know what i mean when i talk about getting sidetracked we all do it um, I got a subscription to Readly. I've heard a few people going on about Readly and I had the opportunity to have a subscription for it. So I did and fell down a massive rabbit hole that is Readly. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, Readly is an app that you can get on like your phone or your iPad or whatever that allows you access to virtually every magazine you can think of. Um, so all your cross stitching magazines are on there and I one of the first ones I had a good look at was just cross stitch. They've just brought out an Halloween vi um what do they call it? Halloween special. And um I fell in love with the chart on there, which I started. So I'll show you that next. I also fell in love with a lot of charts in the Christmas specials. I've never owned a Christmas special magazine, but I was able to really go through them all really quite, you know, from years ago, some of them were from 2014. And um, I've picked out loads of designs that I want to stitch, lots of little smalls and things. So I think you'll be seeing a few bits and bobs coming up soon. But as is the Halloween one, which I know, I think we're just starting to get hold of the actual physical copy of the magazine in the UK now, but I fell in love with this one Quaker Pumpkin and it's by Rosewood Manor which I've never done a Rosewood Manor but there's just something about this chart that really oh I want to stitch it I want to stitch that so I'm kind of going to dip into a little bit of haul here because it's all in weeks dye works um now I wasn't too worried about doing it all in weeks dye works but I really wanted to do the pumpkin itself that's week style with sweet potato and then the top what do you call them i don't know what you call them the... no reeds no they're not reeds i don't know what i don't know what they're called let me know in the comments what are those things coming out the top of the pumpkin cord it's going to be really obvious when somebody tells me mm, of course it's that but um that's in week style which is in tiger's eye or ti tiger eye yeah tiger's eye it is tiger's eye um, and then I did want to stitch the black cats because I don't know if you can see it ever so well, but that they're nice and variegated as well. And it called for um, coal, that eyeliner coal, um, but I couldn't seem to get hold of it anywhere in the UK. I tried all the usuals at Lakeside, Peakside, Leanworks, Patchwork Rabbits, I tried eBay, and the only place I, w I could look at getting it was I think 123 Stitch. I think they had it in stock. But um, it would have taken ages to get here. Plus, you know, it wouldn't be worth just buying one thing from them. And I hadn't really got the budget to buy a lot. So um, I decided to give that a miss. And then it kind of got me thinking. Now, you can see there's, there's three cats on there. And as anybody that's a regular viewer here will know, oh, I never did an introduction, do it, did I? That this is a channel about cross-stitch. And if you're new here... Thanks for joining me if you're a subscriber, returning subscriber. Thank you so much for coming back. Oh, I got straight into it, didn't it? I'm not quite myself today. But um, 
yeah, there's three cats and I've got three cats. So then I started looking at the chart and I'll have to show you what I've done. So put something behind it. There's where I'm at. Can you see who they are? <laughs> so here we've got Darcy, who is a blue colour point ragdoll. So her points, her head, her legs and her tail are all a bluey grey colour and her body is pale. There is actually some shading in her body, but for this I just left it as plain. In the middle I have Bailey. He's a seal bicolour ragdoll. So he has an inverted white V on his face. His, limb, his legs are white, his tail is seal and his body is darker. And then this is Mitzi, who you've just seen. Her, she's a mitted, blue mitted, so she's got a very small stitch there for the little mitts on her paws. And her back legs are white, but her front legs are grey. Tail's grey, face is grey, white body. So that's my cats in cross-stitch form. I just couldn't resist when I saw the chart. I, thought, I could put my cats in there. And I showed it my husband and straight away he realised who they were. I think Bailey's the most striking in the middle. I think it's really obvious that it's him. But um, you can see the variegation in the the threads for the um, the top bit that I can't tell you what it's called in the outside of the pumpkin. Um, this is a 32 count um, Murano in Platinum by Zweigart, which I just had in my stash. And I think it works perfectly for this. The called for was um 28 count sandcastle hand dyed linen by Wichelt, but it's it's not readily available here and i had this in my stash so i thought well i might as well just use this and then i can crack on with it can't i so i'm absolutely loving stitching on this and i want to get it finished for autumn because it's going to be an autumn piece i suppose with having my cats on it rather than black cats it's not a halloween piece it's an autumn piece so i can display it for you know a good three months of the year which would be lovely but that's that. And that's why it's still the cute snap because I'm going to work on it some more. So let's go into a little bit of haul at that point then so I can show you the floss I bought. I did buy a load of um, DMC this month but it's already been bombinated <laughs> bobinated. and I've been using it because it was just DMC that I needed. But yes, then I bought this pretty which is um, Tiger's Eye by Weeks. And I have been using it, so you'll have to excuse me, have a look. Yeah, you can see it's quite variegated. It's a lovely golden, that's probably about right, goldeny, pale straw, with a hint of browns and oranges running through it, but it works really well. And then I bought sweet potato as well sorry I have been using these as you know um, which again is quite a bit of variegation through it dark and light oranges very pumpkin-y right. focus on that not me <laughs> but yeah I don't very often treat myself to fancy flosses but I thought that they really they were important on that piece I thought you can see them and it's obvious that they're there. I hate buying um, a hand dyed and it looks, there's no variegation to it. And it's like, oh, I might as well just have the DMC because it's cotton. Um, but then while they were traveling to me, I couldn't resist. Now this isn't how I thought it was going to be. This is called Christmas Pines and it's a dinky dyes silk. And I was expecting dark greens. <laughs> That is very much light greens and light blues. Yeah, you can quite a good picture of it there. Yeah, it's called Christmas Pines. And I must admit, when I looked at the website, I saw a dark green, <laughs> which I love. But I mean, this has come and it's gorgeous. Um, and I have seen some Christmassy smalls where it's like monochrome. There's a an in circles one. That, the minute I saw the chart, I was like, that's got to be in circles, and it is. It's that sort of design, and. Um, it's a, a little Christmassy one. My my tree at Christmas is sort of blues and silvers and obviously greens with the tree. I've got some peacock designs on my tree, so yeah, which are the blues and the greens together. So this will work perfectly for a, 
like a monochrome small for my tree which will be lovely um yeah really like that one um so yeah that's pretty much all i bought uh, let me show you a couple of ffos now then um you'll have to excuse how badly creased these are as they've been they've not ironed very well anyway i did iron them before i did them but um i've been making project bags again because i've been sewing and i decided to do a bit of both ffo and a project bag so here's the first one this is teeny weeny by um it is straight <laughs> by plum street samplers stitched this gosh a few years ago now and it's just been sitting this is the first Plum Street samples I ever did. It's just been sitting in a drawer, waiting for me to do something with it. And I didn't know what I was going to do as a pillow. Um, I wasn't thinking of framing it. I wasn't sure what to do with it. And then I think it was um, Nicola Bumble Stitches. She turned one of her finished pieces. It was Glitter Village, the work she'd done on Glitter Village by um, Country Cotton Needleworks. That little house country cottage needleworks and she turned it into a project bag and i really liked it and i said wow that's amazing but you know, my skills don't go that far yet <laughs> but um this is fully lined so i've got like a peachy colored polka dot inside there's the pink polka dot and then the backs pink polka dot to go with the the pinky colors in the flowers thought that worked well and this is um uh, r and r linen it's been that long since I stitched on it. Is it Legacy? Legionnaire, Legionnaire's Latte. That's what it's called. Legionnaire's Latte by R&R. Um, R&R &R. <laughs> &R Reproductions Fabric. Um, and this is what the first time I ever used um, hand dyes on this. There's there's weeks and colour and cotton and gas and all sorts in there. You see the variegation in the dogs. But in this one, I've got my um, my current... Plum Street samplers, which is uh, jeans and weenies. It seemed appropriate to put it in the, the weenie bag. So, one more project bag. Getting better. I'm not 100%, must admit. I'm still struggling with this end. I don't know if you can see. I keep missing the fabric when I go over the zip at this end. I'm making the zip. I'm making these bags too long for the zip. I bought 14 inch zips, but they're not quite 14 inch. They were from Amazon. I need to cut it down to more like 13 inch across to allow for that. But yeah, it comes apart as the sewing machine goes over it. And then I miss that bit there. So I end up going over it. So they're not perfect, but they're getting better. I did learn. I learned how to use my zipper for last, last time because I asked on two videos ago about whether I should change to a zipper foot and everybody, yes, yes, you changed to a zipper foot. I was putting on the wrong way around. <laughs> so it was over where the zip should be and where that, it should be at the other side. So there's a gap where the zip. <laughs> well, no wonder I'm finding this really hard. I find it really hard to get a straight line on my zip because you can see it's, it's not overly straight. <laughs> Got the zipper foot on the wrong way around and I figured it out. And then as I figured it out, I went to change it. I think I got a few stitches and it went Pew! What happened? My needle was like that. Oh god, I should have changed my needle. So I've had to change my needle for the first time as well. But I'm getting there. I'm still very much a beginner to this sewing lark. But I did do another one. Same sort of lines. Winter Wheeler Land! <laughs> this is on a light blue. 32 count linen. I think it's just a, a light blue Zweigart linen. And um, the fabric at the top and on the back is one that I picked up from the local haberdashery. I just picked up a fat quarter. It did the backing for one of my pillow finishes and it's done this. Popped in um, blue zip. Uh, no, it's not. It's grey. It's grey zip. Well, because that went well with it. And again, I've had the same issue. And I've not even done a very good job of fixing it. <laughs> But yeah, I keep not catching that bit. Something I've really got to work on. Uh, it's fully lined. So inside's that. And then I've got the peachy polka dots again on the inside because I thought that went quite well with it. 
but practice makes perfect, right? The more I do it, the better I'll guess it. But um, yeah, Winter Wien the Lamb was the second of the Plum Street samplers that I completed. And again, I used variegated threads. I don't think I used all the called for on this one. I think I'd learnt at that stage that some of them weren't that variegated and to just use what you've got. But you can see the house, that's quite variegated. You can, you can, it looks like it's got a smudge going through the middle of it. But uh, this is now my Christmas bag. So it's housing my Advent animals. <laughs> because that's my Christmas piece at the moment, isn't it? Which I've probably got to do some more work on. So those are my FFOs. Then a bit of crochet. I oh another FFO. Do you remember this? Greys, mustards, whites, blues. It's finished. I can't get the whole thing in camera. Ow my arm. Yeah, it's finished. <laughs> now, normally with these blankets, I straighten off the edge, but with this one, I decided, let's do it the right way around, to keep it wavy. And it was actually a lot faster to do, and it was no trouble. And I think it looks absolutely fine. And I added this um, pom pom stitch. Oh, it smells so nice. It's been washed. There was a, a video on my Instagram of it drying on the washing line and we got a storm rolling in, so it was really flapping and it would look really good on the washing line. But um, yeah, really pleased with how that one's turned out. So now I can gift it because you've seen it. It's going to one of my neighbours, who's your little boy soon. And these were the colours that she used for her nursery. So really pleased with that. And then as soon as I finished that, I had to start another ripple blanket. I love making ripple blankets, but this one's in some nice bright colours. I've used mustard again, but this time I've teamed it with uh, blush pink and this is spearmint and wisteria and cream. And that's how far I am with that one at the moment. I'm currently working on, I've just started adding the pink on for the next row. But yeah, it's, a, it's coming up for about halfway already. Really liking that. And I have just started another one because I saw a pattern that I really wanted to try. It's called the Feather and Fan crochet pattern. And I've literally just done a couple of rows, so there's nothing worth showing you here, but I will show you in the next video. I've, I'm going for some nice muted colours in that. Um, some duck egg and mushroom and parchment. And there's a new colour called Hint of Silver, which I decided to use in that. So you'll see some of that next time. So I think... That's about everything. We're just over half an hour, which isn't too bad. So, I'm going to have my first giveaway. I've not done one yet, um, so I hope this works. <laughs> but I, I say giveaway, it's like a pass the stash, but I've, I'm trying to do it as a bit of a giveaway. It's a chart that I've stitched myself, so I've done with the chart. And I'm going to offer the chart out to any subscriber that wants it. Um, you need to be over 18 so I can have your address. So you need to be a subscriber and um, you'll need to comment the keyword on this video. So the chart that I'm giving away is this one. Pussycat Pussycat by the Historical Sampler Company. And I love this piece. I bought this in um, the Knitting and Stitching show at Alexandra Palace a few years ago because I saw it, saw the model and I really liked it. So I wanted to stitch it and I have stitched it myself. I have finished it. Um, it's downstairs. I have showed it on my channel before. It's not framed or anything yet. That's my next step. I need to get a nice square frame and frame it. Um, but um, originally it was just sort of in a plastic baggie. So what I've done is I've popped it in one of these um, plastic wallets. The chart is completely unmarked, it's in there. And then the instructions are in there as well for what colours you need and how to stitch it and what size it will be and everything. And then I'm chucking in a little needle minder for it. So stay positive. Can you focus on it? 
I'm going to focus on it a bit. <laughs> this is by um, Nuts About Needle Minders. It's brand new. Bought it especially for you guys. It's got a little um, thing that says handmade on the back. And it's a good magnet. It's a good strong one. Oh, did you hear that? <laughs> I take it off. It's like a, it was a badge that she's turned into a needle minder. And yeah, it's it's got a good snap on it. And it's a you know, fairly good size. So um, that's what my giveaway is going to be. So you get the chart in its plastic wallet and the needle minder to go with it. So to be in with the chance of winning this, I want you to use the word cat in your comment somewhere because I'm a bit cat mad as you can see there's Darcy in the picture behind me <laughs> and um, oh, sorry, I talked about cats there's one down here again digging uh, so yes I'll send this anywhere in the world um, so it doesn't matter if you're in the US the UK Australia Canada any I'll send it anywhere and what I'm planning on doing is drawing this at my next video which I'm planning on doing in a couple of weeks um, so get your comment in with the word cat. Don't mention giveaway, don't mention prize, freebie, pass the stash, anything like that. Just do a comment with the word cat in it. Most of you know the drill, you do these all the time. This is my first time. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to win that, comment cat. I think that wraps us up. I've not gone into plans this time. I must admit I've sort of literally come home from a day out and gone oh I need to film a floss tube and I haven't made plans as such I want to do some more work on the pumpkin quaker because I want to get that ready for autumn um I should probably do some work on advent animals unicorn spring and then fancy bringing out something a bit older I should probably do some work on patchwork cats because I was supposed to work on that and I didn't and I'll probably start something with this pretty dinky dyes silk pretty soon. I think I've got some um, opalescent Murano left over from Patchwork Cats that this would probably go beautifully on for a Christmas decoration. So I'm going to leave you there. I don't think I've got much else to say. Um, I've been watching my usual floss tubers. Um, Tree's a little stitcher. She's been great. I've been watching her. She's um, recovering from having an operation always watching Sarah Stitching Mommy um, and uh, seeing her gorgeous little cat Smokey. Um, so I've been watching Nicola Bumble Stitches. Um, she's got lots happening at the moment. I've been look watching, is it Annie the Proper Stitcher? I've come across her recently and she's got some fantastic videos. Um, lovely projects to see. Um, and then two who I've not seen for a while, Melly Ellie Stitches. Melly, where are you? Where's your video? <laughs> I like watching you, I like listening to you as well because you're so, always so positive <laughs> but um, I'll pop all the information I can in the box below wish me luck tomorrow, taking the children to a theme park for the first time, should have a good day hopefully they won't drive me too nuts <laughs> my husband and my dad are going to be there they're not, they're not totally my problem <laughs> and I think I better go and think about having some tea because it's now ooh, five to six so time to go and get something to eat so thank you so much everybody for watching i hope you enjoyed it and i hope to see you again soon keep well and stay safe thank you bye